it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to my Thursday Night Live. A little bit later than normal because we had a, a two parent meetings actually. One for softball and one for driver's ed. And I thought the driver's ed one was going to be super short, like pick up your permit and go home. And when we got there, they had a whole uh, hour long agenda for us. And so that meeting went longer than I intended it to. So I am a little bit later than normal tonight, but hopefully you are still watching at home and it's not too late for you. Hi, Becky. Whether you're watching live or watching the replay, say hello when you jump on. Let me know what you're doing tonight. Um, and let me know where you're from. So I live in Illinois. I'm in the central time zone and eight o'clock I know is getting, you know, to be a little bit late, but if you're in the Eastern time zone here in the United States. It's nine o'clock and uh, not so late over on the West Coast. But um, I don't know what that's another question too. What time do you guys go to bed? Are you early, early risers, early to bed, early, early awake? Or are you night owls? I'm a night owl. I stay up much too late. So say hello. Let me know where you're from. Let me know um, what time you go to bed. Is it too late for me to be on? Are you guys already winding down for the evening um, and don't want to watch? Or are you watching from bed? Maybe, maybe that's happening. I am just going to share this video really quick to the group so everybody can find us. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Liz. Hi, Carla. So glad you guys are joining us. Tonight I am post or er, sharing projects using the new celebration um, things that just started in March, just on March 3rd. So this is a second release brochure with some uh, five new celebration gifts and if you are one of my regular customers I'm working on getting these mailed out um, this week so you'll be getting a brochure you can look at the brochure online though so uh, you can check this out if you don't want to wait um, like I said it started March 3rd and everything in this book the new stuff is still available but I have a feeling it's gonna go fast because everything is while supplies last through celebration we make our own stamp sets so those are always good if you're thinking about paper like the new flowering foils paper or the um, very so very vellum you'll probably want to order those first soon so that you don't risk losing out on them but we do have some stamp sets so let's take a look through this catalog really quick and I'm going to show you I've got the real thing here some of which just came for the first time today. Um, this flowering foils though is my favorite. This is a 12 by 12 designer paper and it is a foil paper. So there's rose gold and silver foil and you get four each of three different designs. So one of them is this grid paper and then holy smokes guys, <laughs> these flowers are so amazing. And then um, let's see what else we have in here. The last pattern, oh, there's two more. There's four patterns, so three each of four patterns. We've got the silver design. I can't tell, is this like leaves or flowers or both? Maybe depending on how you want to color it. And this one is definitely little small flowers. Hi, Winnie, hi, Darlene. Thank you guys so much for sharing. Oh, all of you are sharing, you're so awesome. Um, I still owe you guys a prize from our paper pumpkin video. I said that I would draw a prize and I haven't, I thought of it today and I just ran out of time. So I promise I will do that soon. And, um, I, I do have a prize to give away if we can get up to 50, um, people watching live. So keep sharing, let your friends know we're playing with the new stuff. And hopefully they'll want to jump on and see what we're making. So the thing I love about this flowering foil is paper is that you can customize it in different ways by adding color with sponge daubers or brayers or markers. There's so many ways that you can customize this paper for your own projects. Now this one is a level two item because it is a double stamp set. So 
There are two different sheets of stamps and you can get this free with a $100 order in the United States. It's called Rise and Shine and it's one of our reversible stamp sets. So you see these images that are kind of gray. This is if you stamp on the other side. So um, I was trying to cut some pieces so that we could case or copy a project. I think I'm going to try to do um, that one because I haven't inked up my stamps yet. I was so busy with those meetings and then um, trying to get dinner and get everything cleared off and ready to go. So we're going to try to make this card or something similar using the Rise and Shine stamp set. Then this is a level one. The well-dressed stamp set is sort of the masculine or guy version of the um, dress to impress from the spring catalog. So we've got some hat and a shoe and the tie and the umbrella and the pen. So just some fun accessories there. And then the So Very Vellum is really gorgeous. It includes three different colors. We've got Purple Posy, Pool Party, and Soft Sea Foam. And you get two sheets of each color. And they, oh, three sheets? Let me double check. No, two of each color. I think they were just stacked up and I got confused. Um, and each one has this um, embossed like raised embossed um, polka dot design. So really super cool. I'm really loving it so far. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Kelly. I think I missed Jill as well. Northeast Ohio. Thank you, Jill, for sharing. Uh, yeah, tell me where you guys are from. I know I'm in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone, and I'm sorry that I had to push back our um, our live tonight, but I'd like to know where you are where you live. Is it late where you are? Are you getting ready for bed? Um, so tell me what you guys are doing. Hi, Margo. Hi, Trina. Okay, so Silvery Vellum, and then there's one more, and this is also a level two. This is the Tags and Bloom stamp set, and again, you have double double sheets so it's an extra big stamp set and this one coordinates with two of my favorite new punches from the um the spring catalog so these are both new um this is the label me fancy punch and so this one has um the dot and the slot that you can do on the end or both ends if you want. And then this one is just the, the, the shape, which I love because it's like not quite a circle, but it's still a, a large shape. So you can fill it with a big greeting or an image. So both of these are available in the January through June mini catalog, and they both coordinate with the stamp set. And so you have these images that punch out Oh. Um, and fit the images. So I, I'm not going to use this one tonight because I have a bunch of samples that were made with this one. Well, let me finish going through this. Um, and then the last page of this brochure shows you all of the celebration gifts that you can get. So you can shop at my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. If you order $50 or more, you can choose a free gift during celebration. And as you can see, there are a few things that have already sold out. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you want to make sure to get these consumable items first. So the things that um, Stampin' Up! makes their own stamps. So those are going to be available through all the way through the end of celebration. But the vellum paper, the flowering foils paper, the Lily Impressions designer paper, those are um, even the lily pad dies. Um, those are available while supplies last. So do not wait. If you want them, make sure to order them now. Make sure to order them early. And in case you haven't heard already, the small bloom punch, which I adore, is carrying over to the annual catalog. So if you don't get it right now, you will be able to get it later. All the stamp sets are exclusive to celebration. You will never see these stamp sets again after celebration. So if you're trying to decide between a stamp set or the punch, get the stamp set. You can always get the punch later. All right, you guys ready to do some stamping tonight? Yeah, yeah. Hi, Winona. Hi, Denise. Oh, and Pam, you joined us too. Hello, Lou Ellen. I'm so glad you guys are all jumping on tonight. 
I'm going to start with, um, I don't know where to start. Let me start with this one and show you some samples. So I participated in a um, a one for one swap where I just made one card and sent it to somebody and they made a card and sent it to me. Um, and we did this with the, the silver elite leaders in our group. And so um, everyone was kind of on the same page. They were all thinking about how awesome this stamp set is and almost everybody used this stamp set. So tags and bloom. I'm going to show you some cards. Hopefully the glare isn't too bad. Um, this one is by Mary McNeely. And um, I love this classic combination of black and white. A little bit of green in there. This is lovely, lovely lipstick, I do believe. And then this card, is, both these cards are by Meg Lovin, and she is kind of showcasing how you can customize the paper. So here we have the paper uncolored, and then here she colored it blue, so you can see um, sort of the difference between coloring it or not coloring it. So this or that, which way do you guys like it? Do you like it um, the white, or do you like the colored um, designer paper with the blue? This or that, or you could say white or blue. Let me know which of those two that you like better. I can't really decide. I, I'm leaning towards the white. I think just because I like the pink flowers. I think it's so pretty. This um, metallic edge ribbon is part of the Parisian Blossoms suite. And then this white version of it is in the annual catalog. But I don't know, it's just something so soft and sweet, I think, about the white and the and the pink. So Becky says, the white, Barb, and Linda say the blue. Jenny says the blue. Lou Allen says the blue. I mean, they're both beautiful cards, and it's the same design, so you really could go either way. Nancy says the blue. You guys keep commenting. I'm going to move on and show you the next card. This one was made by my mom, Susan LaCroix, and she incorporated some of the vellum with this stamp set. Love this. She's got purple posy here in the background because it's purple posy vellum, and then she's colored with um, purple posy and either dark purple posy or Highland Heather. Um, I don't have, I actually don't have purple posy. Oh, do I have purple posy? I do you have purple posy. So I think that dark is actually pretty dark. So I think it was just the purple posy stamp and blends on there. Such a pretty card. This one is by Kathy Roy. And I thought it was so clever for her to combine the, um, the stamp set tags in bloom with the dress to impressed paper. I wouldn't have thought about um, putting those two together, but it works perfectly. I love it, and I love how she's got like the sort of color blocking with the designer paper here. A great way to show off a lot of coordinating colors and coordinating patterns without it being too overwhelming. So awesome card by Kathy. Yes, mom's card is just beautiful. She actually did this in two different colors. I only have the purple color, but I think she did it in um, using the blue as well um, with the blue vellum, so, so, so pretty. Um, <laughs> Kim chooses the purple card over the white or blue. That wasn't really what I was asking. They're all gorgeous, but, um, yes, <laughs> I mean, I guess you can, you can do whatever you want. Um, this card is, um, I think this one is Kim Peck. I don't have her name on it, but I think she's the only one I don't have a name on. Um, and so she used this punch, um, which nobody else used on their card. So this is the image here and it coordinates with that label me fancy, um, label me fancy punch. And then she lay layered it on, um, I think it's called the everyday label punch. I love the embossed flowers here, which she colored with blends. And let me take this out of the wrapper because she colored on the paper with Stampin' Blends as well. It's kind of hard to see, but she's colored the flowers with petal pink and the center of the other flowers with the pool party. So she has customized that paper. Let me see if I can find that pattern to show you. Maybe if I hold it up next to it, you can see better the coloring that she's done. It kind of pops with the coloring. There it is. 
um, really pretty card by Kim. Uh, this one is also by Mary McNeely, and she incorporated the vellum and the paper with this um, Tags and Bloom stamp set. Love, love, love this. So she's cut out, fussy cut the background and then punched the greeting to stick it in the center. And this last card featuring this stamp set is by Kim Peck. And she colored the back of the pearlized doily and then used the vellum as well. So these products intermingle with each other so nicely. I love, 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 love it. So I'm not making any cards with the tags in bloom because I had so many awesome samples to show you already with that set. So I'm gonna set that aside and um, I might as well just show you the other, let's see, I'm gonna show you this one. This was by Kathy Roy and she punched that vellum with the, um, the daisy punches. She used the, the medium and the large or is it small and large? Anyway, both sizes of them and then she used the sentiments and the the side pieces here are from the Rise and Shine set. I thought that was really clever the way that she used this stamp here. It looks small, but it's this this stamp and then um, this one, which I think is supposed to be a leaf for the flower. She kind of made them coming out from, from the flower. So I thought that was really cool. And then I've got two more cards. These are using the Well Dressed stamp set that sort of guy card or guy stamp set this one uh was by mom susan lacroix and she um kind of used the different images with some plaid paper from the country club designer paper from the spring catalog and then i made this one and i was also inspired by the plaid in the tie to use the country club paper and i added a strip of the argyle can you see the argyle texture i got the embossing folder um, there you can see a little better that texture so love love these cards love this stamp set all right so those are all the cards all the swap cards um, and I'm just I'm just getting started playing with all this new stuff so let's jump in and um, I'm gonna start with this one because I love it so much um, I'm going to use the flower from the, um, from the flowering foils and we're going to do a little coloring on the designer paper and I was going to looking for the stamp set, but it's paper. It's not a stamp set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, I should have done this ahead of time. I'm just going to cut out one of the image. You can color them all at once and then cut them out. Like one thing that's fun to do is just to color them all and then you can sit and fussy cut them like when you're watching TV or when you're picking up the kids and waiting for them to come in the car, <laughs> which I find myself doing a lot. So you could bring a project like this and just do, do some fussy cutting when you have some time and you're just waiting. I, I do this sometimes in the car, not while I'm driving, but <laughs> while my husband is driving on long trips, um, or I just lost my train of thought. Oh, what was I going to say? In the car, I don't know. This is the kind of thing that's easy just to kind of. I have like these plastic shoe boxes that I bring stuff like that to work on so I can kind of pull it out and work on it in the car or on the couch or wherever I am and then put it away and set it aside. <laughs> fussy cutting. <laughs> I'm glad you like fussy cutting. Um, I, I don't mind it. I don't love it but um, but sometimes it's just necessary and for these flowers, you could use it as a big background, but I think having it be the focal point and cutting it out is just a really fun way to use it. So, almost done. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, I, I'm gonna get out my messy sheet for coloring because I just got out a clean, clean one for uh, the video tonight and I don't want to mess it up right out of the gate. 
So there are so many ways that you can color this paper. You can use a sponge brayer, you can use brush o, you can color with markers or blends. I'm gonna use my sponge daubers, which fit really nicely on the finger and, um, and sort of blend. Um, yeah, sometimes I bring it, Jenny, maybe that's what I was thinking of. Like when I am going to tournaments and games with the kids, I like to bring stuff like that. Um, trying to look at your comments really quick. Um, okay, so I've got the sponge dauber and I'm gonna I'm gonna tap it on the ink pad to pick up the ink and then I'm just gonna kind of burnish from the center and then bring the color out. So it's gonna be darker in the center, but I still want the lighter color in at the end of the petal. So I'm I'm kind of working working the color over. I don't want it to be too dark on the petals. So I'm just going to kind of work that around. Can you see it? And then we're going to do green on the leaves. This is the um, soft sea foam. So using the sponge dropper is a softer way to add color. Um, if you like a darker look, you can color directly on the paper with the markers. So I am going to add, um, on the markers, I'm going to color these other flowers that are on the side because they're a little small to get very well with the sponge dauber. And then there are some little leaves I'm going to hit with the marker as well. Okay, isn't that so pretty? Oh my gosh, I just love this so much. So you can have so much fun coloring all your flowers, different colors, and you get a whole sheet. So you get three sheets of the 12 by 12. Um, and look at all those flowers. Some of them have double flowers and some of them are single flowers, but um, they're, all, they're all beautiful. Um, okay, here's my dimensionals. All right, so I've got some pieces pre-cut here. This is a soft seafoam card base. It's five and a half by eight and a half. And then I cut, um, I cut the, um, the vellum to be three and three quarter inches by five inches. And adhesive shows through the vellum. So I'm gonna only put adhesive in the center because I'm gonna cover that up with the other stuff. This one, like, it's not as, because it's colored. You can't see it through it as well as regular vellum, but you can still see where I put it. So um, I'd still recommend trying to hide it if you can. And then um, I find that layering over the vellum, and especially since the vellum isn't adhered down on the ends, I'm going to use sticky strip to put on this piece of Blushing Bride because I want it to hold down as well and anchor that piece of vellum. So this Blushing Bride piece of cardstock is one and a half inches by four and a quarter. And this is gonna go across the top center. And then I had a bunch of these already pre-cut. They're scallop rectangles, and they're in the Stitched So Sweetly die set. This is from the mini catalog. Let me grab it, because this is my favorite new die set. It's in the mini catalog, and it is bundled with the So Sentimental. So you've got different sizes of the scallop rectangles, and then these other little tag shapes. So this one's called Stitch So Sweetly. Um, number 151690. You can get it bundled with a greeting stamp set or you can get it by itself, but if you're looking for new die cut shapes or tags, this one is really cool. So that's what I used and I already had it cut out here. And then I'm just going to grab words. Um, I don't Oh, here's the stamp set. Itty Bitty Greetings. 
This is a, um, a double stamp set. This is from the annual catalog. And this is just like lots of perfect little sentiments for all occasions. So if you're looking for a stamp set to get for free when you join as a demonstrator, you can choose a free stamp set as part of your starter kit. You also get a mini, a mini paper trimmer and a six by six designer paper sampler. This would be a good one for your any price stamp set because it is a little bit more expensive, I think. Um, so I'm using the stamp that says with gratitude and I'm going to stamp that up in the corner and then use dimensionals underneath the rectangle and also dimensionals underneath the flower. And we're going to put this together. You're always at work, Christina. <laughs> Am I in your back pocket again? <laughs> I think maybe you work too much. <laughs> um, yes, Kim, it is going to be gorgeous. You are definitely going to want to case it. And it's gorgeous because of this paper. Like, I don't think you can make an ugly card <laughs> with this flower. No matter what you do with it, it's going to be gorgeous. Um, but the vellum too is just so soft and so pretty. So I'm just going to put the, um, the flower on. And then the last thing I did was to add some rhinestones and this, and this is an old package of rhinestones and they don't have them on the sheets like this anymore, but they used to have these rows and I never, um, I never liked to use these. So I have all these scraps with these rows. So what I do, cause I don't want to use the whole thing connected. I cut, I cut it apart like this and then I can peel them off because otherwise it's this whole string that's connected. Do you see that? So if you have, if you still have the rhinestones like this, you can cut them apart and then they're easier to use. So we're going to add some rhinestones. I was debating about whether or not to add like twine or ribbon, but I don't want to go overboard. <laughs> and this is where I always get stuck is where to put the third one. Always like to do it in threes. Like I want to put it by the greeting, but then it's not like symmetrical. So like, I feel like down here. Oh, yay! Thank you for all your hearts. I'm so glad you like this. I was really happy with the way this card turned out. So let me show you my other one. I, I kind of turned the flower just slightly. And uh, I struggled. <laughs> I struggled with where to put the, the diamonds on this one, too. But I, I kind of had them on the opposite side because I had it going the other way. Actually, it looks like it's a slightly different flower because it's got a, a little bit um, more of a spray. But, um, yeah. Yay! Such a pretty card. I love this one. Okay, so let's make a card using a different pattern from this paper. Maybe we'll go in a different direction and do something masculine. How about that? So we're going to use paper, even though this is like a rose gold, I still feel like the, the pattern itself can be a little masculine. So, um, I kind of put part of this together already so you can see where we're going with it, but I wanted to customize the paper in a different way. So I decided instead of brayering or coloring the whole thing that I would just take a marker and I would add more lines to kind of make this, um, this paper, this plaid a little more colorful. So I'm just going to take the marker. You can do every one or you can skip some and you can customize your paper. However, you want it to be. I did one with green stripes too and it was just it was too busy so um, I think maybe less is more <laughs> on this one so I cut this into one and a half inch squares and I put it on a square that's three and three quarter by three and three quarter and I'm going to put that on this crumb cake card base 
And so then I want to add my image. So let's get out our stamp sets. Um, well dressed. I was thinking about using the hat for the center image, but I haven't actually, I haven't actually made it yet. So I could be talked into something different. <laughs> um, I wondered actually about using like the umbrella too. I made another, or I was attempting to make another card where I used the umbrella and cut it out. And then I, I ended up not using it on my project, but maybe that would be a good way to incorporate the crumb cake um, color from the card base. It's going to be a fussy cutting kind of night. Where did my, I'm going to do a circle. Do you think the dark one or the light one? I'm going to give you guys a second to answer while I'm cutting out the hat. Hat in the shoe at the bottom. Oh, I see what you're saying, Liz. Yeah, you guys all need that beautiful paper. All of you. If you haven't ordered it yet, you need to get on tonight. <laughs> uh, maybe not tonight, but seriously, don't wait to get the paper. I would be so sad for you if you waited and you missed out because you didn't get your order in for that flowering foils paper. Okay, so Eva, you said this set doesn't really do it for you, and I, I'm kind of feeling, I'm kind of feeling it. Like I, I have, the next card I'm gonna make, I really love the way it turned out. So maybe it'll change your mind too. Um, but I thought, I thought that um, they're just sort of too random. Like I'm not sure how to use them together, which is why I like. Um, like mom's car, let me bring that out again, where she just kind of has the, the images individually laid out. And then this was the other card I made where I just used one image, the, um, the tie. Um, Liz, I'm so sorry you missed out on the B paper. It just sold out. Like, I did a workshop Tuesday night, and somebody ordered a package of it, and I, um, I came home to put her order in, and it had sold out. I checked before I went, and it didn't sell out, and I came home, and it was gone. It was gone! I have some scraps, Liz, and I'll send you some, okay? If I forget, please remind me. I can't promise how much I have to send you, but it will, I guess a little bit is better than nothing, right? Okay. No, Nobody voted on the light or the dark umbrella, so I just decided on the light one. But if we if we like the darker one, we can always cut that one out too. <laughs> All right. So I was kind of thinking like a little layering like that. Does that look okay? Does that look silly? I would I would put the hat on dimensionals and just glue the other one flat. And then for words. I have um, I have the Sending You Thoughts, which is another celebration stamp set, and I thought it would be um, I thought it would be a fun one to use. Let's do 
just going to use this on another card. Did I glue that down already? Is it crooked? I did glue it down. Ah! <laughs> It's a little better. All right. Happy birthday and night of Navy. Do you like it? I'm thinking maybe I feel like I need that darker umbrella. I'll try to be quick. I'm sure it's not fun to watch me cut. <laughs> Can you guys hear my chimes outside? I'm in the front of my house and on my front porch I have some chimes and it's so windy. They're so loud tonight. And then there's a rattling and the rattling, I think I like the darker one better. The rattling is my, um, I have like a decoration on the front door. It's not a wreath. It's a heart. It says welcome. It's wooden and it's just like rattling against the door. It's so loud. Okay. Um, Watermark the shoe at the bottom of the umbrella. The shoe at the bottom of the hat or bottom or the hat umbrella. Hmm. Let me come back up. Hi, Connie. Okay. Finn umbrella got lost. Oh, the yeah. I think the light umbrella was too, too light. Um. Yes. Okay. Darker is better. I'm afraid that adding a shoe is just going to be like, like too much. I could put it down here. Is that, would that be like too, it'd be facing the other way. I think it's definitely too much to put it on the circle. I think it's just going to be too busy. What do you guys think about putting it down here with the, the, um, okay. So Eva says no shoe. Yeah, I think you guys, I think I agree. I think the shoe might be too much. Maybe on the inside of the card. Um, so watermark, Eva, um, Liz keeps saying the watermark, like the Versamark ink pad creates like a watermark, which is like a tone on tone. So it's, it's more subtle. Um, my Versamark ink pad, I honestly haven't used it in a really long time. And I, I don't know how, um, well inked it is. I would, I would want to get a re-inker out and, and, and ink that up so that it, it performed correctly but I am gonna add the shoe inside and I have some inside words oops on the other side of my block that says another sensational year of you so this is what it would look like if I put it on the front I wonder if I have a scrap of crumb cake. I'm gonna do a little, little experiment and show you guys what it would look like if we put one there. We'll do stamp and then stamp off. I don't know. Maybe it's not so bad. I 
I wouldn't put the layer. Okay, I've seen a lot of no shoes. We've got one on the inside. We got our shoe in there, Liz. All right, I did not bring anything to clean my stamps. Hmm. Hey, Jim. Everybody's upstairs. I'll have to see if I can find someone to help me get a paper towel. Okay. Let's move on. We're going to do another card with this stamp set and this one. And I really, really like the way that this next card turned out. So maybe I will change your mind on this well-dressed stamp set. Just to review, here are some already awesome cards that we've made or shared. And the next card is super cool. I'm not gonna show you it, so I'm gonna make you wait. Um, I made this card for my um, my swap that I swapped with everybody. So um, we're gonna make a gate fold card. So this is a card that uh, folds like a gate and meets in the middle. This is four and a quarter inch by 11 inch. And then I scored at two and three quarters and eight and a quarter. So that I have each, each of these segments is two and three quarter inches by four and a quarter. So we've got this here. We're gonna do a piece on the inside. And then we have a gray piece. This is gonna go on the front. And we're gonna do a little banner and a circle. So let's do our stamping and we're stamping over the edge. So I'm gonna get out my scrap paper again to keep my other sheet clean. Now this is a stamp that intrigued me from this set. And so um, I decided to use it to create a border. So I'm gonna stamp this one. It's sort of like a, um, like a chevron like an Aztec kind of a design. So I'm gonna stamp this. I'm using basic gray ink on basic gray cardstock to create this border at the bottom. Doesn't that look cool? I'll just stop right there. No, I'm kidding, I won't stop right there. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. What am I looking for? Oh, my um, punch. Um, I like to use this tailored tag punch to create the um, the little flag ends, oops, I just broke my bench, to create the flag ends on, um, on my banner. So I'm gonna cut those ends. And that's gonna go in the middle. And I'm just, these are my stamps, don't. Don't do what I'm doing. Clean your stamps in between. <laughs> I'm trying to get the navy ink off so that I can use um, the basic gray ink next. That goes there. So I want to use this piece. Okay. And then on the inside piece, another sensation layer of you, which is kind of crooked. Let me try that again. Better. Okay, basic gray ink. Then we're gonna come back with some mint macaron and we're gonna use the pen. I love the pen, I kind of didn't really notice the pen um, the first time I saw this set because I was so focused on some of the other images, but the pen works for not only guys, but also ladies who love to write. So we're gonna do the pen in mint macaron and punch it out with the two-inch circle punch. Oh, what is this for? Oh, this is for layering the gray. So let's move our, move our dirty sheet and bring in our adhesive and start gluing together. 
Can you guys hear my chimes? I don't think anybody answered. I don't know how well that comes across on the um, on my phone's microphone if it even picks up at all. But where did my dimensionals go? I've made quite a mess, and I lost my sheets. Got another one. Oh, maybe I just missed all the comments about the chimes. Well, I'm glad that you can't hear them. <laughs> I would I would hate for them to be annoying. Sometimes I wonder if like my neighbors can hear them. I I would really hate for them to be annoying my neighbor. What's in front of me? Well, these are the ones I just used. Are there other ones in front of me? Wouldn't be the first time, right? <laughs> okay, and then on the front, whenever you're putting something like this on the, a gatefold card, you only want to put adhesive um, on one side. Can you hear the chimes, Liz? Can you hear the... I mean, they really are pretty. It's not like an awful sound. Sometimes with the wind, it's a clanging. But um, here's what I'm looking for. I want to use something strong. Um, so that it doesn't come off the card. So I'm going to use tear and tape on one side only, one end only. Um, okay. Oh, you can hear them. All right. Um, okay, so I'm going to put this down, and then here, there's my finished card. So masculine sort of in the colors but again like I don't think like I think this card could go either way I think it could be for um, anyone who loves to write basic gray mint macaron love this little combination hi Barb well you just missed I used the well dressed stamp set to make this card I, co I colored or made lines with the um, markers on the foil paper and then we also made this card, and I love the way this one turned out. We colored on the foil paper and used some of the very vellum, and I showed a lot of swap cards. So not, I say a lot. There's probably 10, 12 maybe. So you'll have to watch the replay and catch up on all of those. Um, I think I've got one more card I wanted to make with you guys tonight, and this one I started cutting um, but I haven't made it before, so I wasn't sure exactly on the measurements. But this one, I'm going to use the Rise and Shine stamp set and copy from the um, from the celebration book. So I, you guys know, if you watched me before, you know I like to case or copy um, from the catalog, and um, sometimes from myself, I just like to use the same layout and make something new so um, I'm gonna copy this card right from the celebration book um, I I love the colors here so I don't know if this is like pool party or um, coastal cabana maybe so I decided on, and actually on this one, I think they took strips of cardstock and like made their own background. Isn't that kind of cool? Um, so I just took a sheet from the Bonanza Buddies um, designer paper and I thought this would kind of be a fun background for our card. So I'm going to use that. Although now I'm putting it on there and wondering if that's not the right color to, to layer it on. Like maybe I should be using Bermuda Bay instead which is the darker the darker blue I think I like that better don't you this just looks really dull on the um, next to the designer paper so let's just cut let's just cut a new card base I'm going four four and a quarter by eleven and then um going to score at five and a half and we'll just 
trade this out. And then we've got um, Mango, Mango Melody on this one. And so we can use that tailored tag punch again. That's what I like about this. We cut a small banner earlier and then you can cut a larger banner. Um, this is a two inch piece. And then, like I said, I just kind of had to eyeball it. I didn't know what size to make um, these pieces. So I have a piece that goes there. Maybe that is too big. I guess we'll find out when we start stamping and maybe we'll need to cut it down. So this stamp set is a reversible stamp set. So it's kind of cool. Which one do we need? We need the one with the hole um, because you can put it on the block one of two ways. You can have it this way with a handle or you can have it that way with a handle. And um, and you can do it both ways if you want. So you can stamp it and then take it off and then um, clean it and put it on the other way. So I want my handle to go that way, the same way as the, um, the sample. So um, let's get out my mango. And I think I want to stamp off so that we can see the other design on top of the lighter yellow. Ooh, that's kind of got like a fun um, like shadow effect. And then we've got this sort of like bright I need to clean off the stamps. Oh, did I clean them? Well, I need to put away the stamps anyway for my workshop on Tuesday. I'm running low on blocks. So now we can see the darker one. If we had used this one, you you wouldn't be able to see that a little bit, but not very well. And then we're gonna get out Bermuda Bay for the words. And So um, this set just came today. I wasn't going to get it, or I didn't pre-order it anyway, because I'm not a coffee drinker, and some of you may have heard, I've never had a cup of coffee in my life. Um, do you guys drink coffee? Uh, so because I don't drink coffee, this stamp set didn't really excite me because I don't drink coffee. Um, so I waited, and I got it. I got it for free with an order because demonstrators could pre-order um, sell it the new celebration things to make samples so I did get some other ones but not this one now this stamp set rise and shine coordinates with the cup of cheer framelits these were in the holiday catalog and they're still available now so um, that's really exciting. We've got the tag fits into the tag die cut and of course the mugs fit into the mugs. So you can still get these dies in the online store. You'll find them under holiday favorites and you've got, um, two different dies for, um, the different directions of the handle. So I'm going to line this up and run this through my big shot, which is right on the floor. Oh, I didn't grab my, there it is. Just going to lean down and do this off camera. Okay. So I'm not sure that my white piece is the right shape. Let me get out a new one and, and try again. I feel like it could be a little narrower. Let me get my mini trimmers. This is perfect for things like this. This one is three inches. So let's make this one, let's start with three and a half inches. We'll just eyeball it and we'll see if we need to go less. Maybe we need to make 
the banner a little bit smaller. This is what happens when you case things, is you kind of have to work out your measurements on the fly and figure it out as you go. I think that looks right, proportion wise. So let's stamp our words again. Make today amazing. Oh, I just love that sentiment. Like that works for so many things. Rise and shine and make today amazing. Heck yeah. Yeah, I like chai tea. And I, I, I drink berry tea as well. My dad says it's not actually tea. He says, I'm just drinking flavored hot water. <laughs> Hi, Regina. Yes, this is new celebration. These um, new goodies just started March 3rd. There are five flowering foils, the Rise and Shine stamp set, which we're using, the Well Dressed, the So Very Vellum, and the Tags and Bloom. This is uh, all new celebration um, products that just started this week on Tuesday. And this is the card that we're casing. So I'm just taking another look at it to see. I, I got out my silver thread because that's what they used on the card. I don't normally use silver thread because it's just so thin and like um, kind of tedious. But I thought I have it, so let's use it. So we're going to add that to the back going to add some wisps of silver thread. Um, did you say peppermint? Ooh, peppermint green tea. I've not tried peppermint green tea. Uh, and I do like hot chocolate. I have had hot chocolate before. Um, I do use my coffee mugs for, for tea. Um, I have a small collection. Not a lot of mugs, but I have have a small collection of mugs. Um, I'm trying to make sure my, my things are going to be wide enough. Double it up. Do you mean the thread double it up? Is that what you're saying? I'm going to actually like more than double it up. I'm going to do like a whole bunch. I think that'll work. So I'm going to put some adhesive on the side. To try to catch. <laughs> That's so messy. This is what I don't like about linen or this, this metallic thread is that it's so, it's so fussy and it's so unpredictable. But I guess that's the appeal of it. I don't know. I, like, I kind of just want to take it off. You know, maybe let's try. Like this is what I use a ton of is like the linen thread, not the linen thread, the um, uh, baker's twine. But maybe this is just too thick. Yeah, I know, you can hardly see it because it's so thin and it does look just messy. So maybe just, t let's take this apart so that it's a little bit thicker than the, um, Thicker than the silver metallic thread, but not as thick as the regular baker's twine. Maybe this will work. <laughs> it's not coming apart. Where is it getting stuck? Um, mm, there we go. Uh, you know what other hot drink I like is cider. Hot cider. 
Now that we're talking about hot drinks, I think I'm going to have to make myself one when I'm all done stamping with you guys. I, um, <laughs> my throat is always so dry. It's so weird to talk for like a straight hour by myself. <laughs> and so I usually make myself a hot cup of something Thursday nights. struggling so much you guys <laughs> oh my goodness uh, Nancy you like the looped silver thread do you, you like it because it blends in um yeah yeah it's like hair that's like the perfect word for it um I'm just gonna do see these aren't even big enough okay Jules <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys. I have two, and I'm going to loop one on one side and one on the other side. Um, yeah, I usually do like a figure eight, Becky, but... Um, my piece isn't long enough to go across this whole card. Um, and apparently my hands don't want to do a figure eight right now. <laughs> oh, let's try some more loops. And put them over here. I think I shared something recently that was like, you don't see all the mess behind it. <laughs> and that is definitely this card. You just see... The, the part out front. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't like this at all. Just do a little bow. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like at the end, at the end of our hour, uh, I always just sort of fall apart. <laughs> Is that accurate, guys? Do I just fall apart at the end of our hour? I can't get it right. Kept trying to wipe the silver thread off my phone. <laughs> right? It does look like dog hair. Oh my gosh. One time I got dog hair, it got underneath my screen cover, and I thought I had a crack in my phone, and then it moved. And, <laughs> and I realized that it wasn't dog hair. Or it was dog hair and not the, um, and not a crack. Okay, one dimensionals. Oh my god, seriously? They went away again. They're there. <laughs> Sometimes I do feel like things just get up and walk away from my table. And usually they are right in front of me. <laughs> well, I'm happy I'm entertaining. Okay, since we're not doing the loopy loops, I'm going to put it on the side, and put the handles, oh, I'm put it on the other side so I can put the loop on, or the, the ribbon on the handle. So let's try that again. And part of the reason I'm able to take it up so easily is because I don't always push down on the adhesive until, like, I'm sure about the position. And so in that case, I hadn't really, like, given it the, you know, push-push yet. So, like, it's just sitting there, and then I can adjust it. And then I give the, the push down. Yes, this was the way to go, guys. Glue dots. Glue dots, glue dots. Where are my glue dots? Have you seen my glue dots? Are they on the table? Underneath the dies. Found them. Okay. 
Okay. I think I better use the RR before. Oh, don't have an accident, Jenny. <gasps> but you could take us to the bathroom with you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, we're almost done. This is the last card, and then I'm going to go get myself some hot tea and sit on the couch and hopefully watch Survivor if the kids are done with homework. What do you guys think? Let's take a look at our inspiration card. I made a few adjustments, but it is very much the same. One thing that they have on there, can you see, is the um, heart epoxy droplets. It's called something like that. And I really love that, but I don't have any heart epoxy droplets. So um, I did think about adding some rhinestones. So maybe we'll do that really quick. There's always room for rhinestones, right? What do you think? Is that too much? Just right? I think the clear epoxy ones would have been better because they wouldn't have been so in your face. Ooh, do I have the glitter ones? Oh, oops. <laughs> it's okay, guys. I'm good. Um... Is this too much? This card turned out nicely. Glad you changed the color of the cards. Like, yeah, I think it was perfect. I don't know that those are the right blue. And maybe it's, they're too big. Yeah, I think we're going to leave the rhinestones. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, all right, let's recap really fast. And take a look at the cards we made. We finished up with this one using the new Rise and Shine designer paper. We used the flowering foils to make this masculine card. And where's our, our pretty um, flower card? Where did I stick that one? Oh, right here. Oops, dropping it on the floor. So that was the flowering foils. We also used the So Very Vellum. And then we used the well-dressed stamp set to create this card and this gatefold card using the well-dressed stamp set. And I didn't make anything with the tags in bloom, but I shared lots of card swaps. So if you're just tuning in or you came in at the end, make sure to watch the beginning of the video. I shared those cards, lots of ideas, all these new things you can get with a qualifying order during celebration. The uh, purple ones are free with the $50 order. The red ones are free with the $100 order. And you can get them right now in my online store at Julie Davis davison.com slash shop. I forgot to give you the host code, but I will add it to the video description when we're all done. Um, you can use the host code. If you order $40 or more, you get a special gift from me. If you order during February, I'm working on all those gifts right now, and we'll be sending them in the mail in the next few days. Um, so... Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really had fun stamping with you, and I appreciate all of your feedback. I hope that you guys have a great night and a fabulous week ahead, and I will see you next Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. Take care.